To start off, yes, I am wearing a Halloween spirit jersey. I am in mourning. Let me have this. Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you all have had a fabulous week and are ready for yet another fun ranking video. And I feel like it's been quite a while since I've done one of these, since we just wrapped my Halloween series, which I had so much fun doing this year and I am so grateful for all of the love on my four weeks of Halloween. And while Halloween has sadly passed us, that means it is time to return to some fun Disney content. And what better way to return to ranking videos than by diving right back into Disney's animated movies. Yes, today we are combining two of my favorite topics, which is Disney animated movies and Disney music. Now, previously on my channel, I have ranked Disney songs individually, but today's list is a little bit different. Disney animated musicals are perhaps some of the most beloved of the Disney movies. And so today we're going to go through and rank all of the Disney soundtracks of Disney's animated musicals. If you're new here, hi, my name is Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator. I did get my start over on TikTok, but have joined the YouTube community and have been absolutely loving making long form videos. So whether this is your first time here or if you you've seen me before, make sure to hit subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. And likewise, you can also find me on all of my social medias at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. But my friends, I have quite a list for you today. So today we're going to keep the intro very short. So as always on this channel, we're going to jump into some brief disclaimers and conditions for the list today. But if you would like to jump right into the ranking, then of course you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company and I do not speak for the brand or the company. All of the opinions in this video are just my own and do not reflect those of the company. But secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney movies, Disney characters, and Disney music down in my comment section. This list is all just my opinion in terms of which soundtracks I think are the best, but I'm very curious to hear what all of your favorite soundtracks to Disney movies are down in the comments. And thirdly, for our disclaimers, I do want to give a brief spoiler warning for all of the Disney animated musicals that we are going to be talking about today. As for some of the talking points, we might be discussing how some of the music influences the plot of each movie. And so I do want to give just a brief disclaimer that we might be talking about some plot events in each animated movie. And so if you'd rather not have a specific Disney animated movie spoiled for you, then you can just jump right on up to the next number on today's list. But next, moving on to our conditions today, because I do have quite a few conditions in order to make this list. First up in our conditions list, these are all Disney soundtracks from Disney animated movie musicals. This does mean we will not be including any outside companies such as Pixar, Lucasfilms, or 20th Century Fox. We are also not going to be including any direct to DVD sequel or prequels, or midquels. <laughs> so only theatrically released Disney animated movie soundtracks. But in addition to all of those conditions, I do have two more. And these last two conditions might minimize the list a little bit, but I do have a specific reason why I want to include them. The first very specific condition for today's list is that there must be at least three songs in the soundtrack that feature human vocals. There are a lot of wonderful Disney animated movies that have a lot of beautiful background music, but if we're talking specifically Disney animated musicals, we really want some context from the songs. And the second specific condition is that at least one of those three songs with human vocals must be sung by leading characters. Once again, there are a lot of Disney animated movies that are quite often sung in voiceover, and so you don't really get to see the characters expressing the emotion of the song. And considering Disney musicals are so popular and so many people gravitate towards them, I really do want to hone in specifically on the ones where we're getting that full range of emotion and singing from characters. And in addition to all of those conditions, I am going to be limiting today's list to just 30 Disney animated musicals. We have a lot to talk about for each individual soundtrack, and so putting a limit on today's list is really going to help us to dive in deep to all of these great soundtracks. But my friends, with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to start ranking some of Disney's animated soundtracks. Oh yes, and really quickly, I do want to go over a couple of brief talking points that we're going to touch on for each individual soundtrack. The first talking point we're going to touch on is the music's 
relationship to the story. The second point is the cohesiveness of the soundtrack. Like, do the songs sound like they come from the same genre and that they flow from one to the next? And the third talking point is going to be all of my opinions surrounding the soundtrack, as well as a few of the hits and skips. Hits meaning my favorite songs from the soundtrack, and skips meaning the ones that I never listen to. But yes, friends, if you are ready to dive into these incredible Disney soundtracks with me, then sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's get into ranking Disney's animated movie musical soundtracks. We are starting today's list all the way down in the F tier, which contains one movie musical. <laughs> the F tier consists of a movie musical that I do not think is successful. While it might have a good story and some songs might be a little catchy to some, I do not gravitate towards it at all. And I'll be honest, it barely made the bottom of today's list. <laughs> so with that, friends, we are going to start and end the F tier at number 30, which is Home on the Range. Now, as for the music's relationship to the story, the correlation, in my opinion, is not strong. If you, the viewer at home, happen to walk out into the street and ask the nearest bystander, what do you think of the music from the Disney animated musical Home on the Range? They would probably look at you like something was wrong with you. <laughs> I mean, that's a question I quite often ask random people on the street, don't you? But yes, in my opinion, the correlation between the two is not strong. And while the music might sound generally cohesive between all of the songs in the album, in my opinion, it's just not a strong soundtrack. It's not really one that allows us to get really deep emotions from these characters, and in all honesty, really doesn't have a lot of catchy tunes. And so for my opinion on this soundtrack, I cannot remember the last time that I willingly looked up this movie musical to just play the soundtrack. <laughs> As somebody who watches Disney movies pretty much on the daily, I very rarely revisit this one because I just don't gravitate towards it at all. And for me, honestly, it's even very hard to find one viable song from this movie. Now that is criticism that I would not throw at any other Disney movie. I just happen to not be a huge fan of Home on the Range. But if you really love this movie, please let me know what your favorite song is from the movie down in the comments because I'm sure there's somebody out there that likes it. <laughs> but with that, friends, we're gonna move on up to the D tier. In the D tier of today's list are five Disney animated movies that I think have acceptable soundtracks. In my opinion, they are not above and beyond, and they are probably not the movie musicals that you think of when you think of Disney animated musicals. Overall, these soundtracks are not bad, but I would definitely say they're not the strongest. So with that, we're gonna start off the D tier at number 29, which is Oliver and Company. Now let's start off with the strengths of this one, which is the music's relationship to the story. What this soundtrack does eons better than Home on the Range is establish environment. You very much get the general energy that from this music, we are in New York City. It also does very heavily show off different characters and their energy. Just as an example, Why Should I Worry, Sykes, and Bedtime Story all have very different energy. And that's why I would hesitate to say that it's weaker around cohesiveness of the album. The music does all sound like it comes from the same universe, but I also do think there are quite vast differences between different songs on this list. As for my opinion, I don't think it's a bad playlist at all. But that being said, there are very few songs on this playlist that I seek out willingly. Of course, Perfect Isn't Easy is absolutely iconic, and Once Upon a Time in New York City is a staple, but overall, it's just not one of my absolute favorites. Next, moving on up to number 28 on my list is Lilo and Stitch. Now, Lilo and Stitch contains some really great songs, so let's get into why it is this low on the list. Now, I would primarily categorize Lilo and Stitch as a jukebox musical. Now, what is this? A jukebox musical is more so a musical that takes music from pre-existing artists and creates a story around it. We all know from watching Lilo and Stitch that Lilo is a very big fan of Elvis, hence why Elvis's songs appear in Lilo and Stitch. Now you might also be wondering, in accordance with our conditions for the list, where do the characters sing in this movie? Well, the reason why Lilo and Stitch makes it onto today's list is because of Nani's heart-wrenching rendition of Aloha Oi. I think at the very heart of this movie is this performance by Nani. Because while she is singing pre-existing music that was not necessarily written by the Disney company, this song is so 
integral to her story and what is happening between her and her sister, that it is undeniable that it perfectly showcases Nani's character development and arc. So while the music's relationship to the story can sometimes not feel incredibly strong, seeing as the music appears because the characters are a fan of the original artists, I would argue that this is not the case with every song. Now moving on to the cohesion of the soundtrack, it's okay. I definitely don't think it's the strongest level of cohesion, considering we get You Ain't Nothing But A Hound Dog followed by Aloha Oi. You know, it's, it's, there's a little bit of something funky happening there. But for the movie, and when you're watching the movie and it's pacing, I think it works. Now, as for a few of my hits or misses, I absolutely love Hawaiian Roller Coaster Ride. This one is such a bop. It's such a bop. A bop. <laughs> and I absolutely have it on a ton of my favorite Disney playlists. It just gets you in such a high energy feel and it's probably my favorite one from the movie. But next we're gonna move on up to number 27 on my list, which is The Three Caballeros. Now, while it may not be the most popular of the Disney animated musicals, I really love the music from The Three Caballeros. For the music's relationship to the story, I think it's undeniable that it has a very strong relationship to the culture in which The Three Caballeros is written for. The Three Caballeros song itself might feel very camp and sort of funny and whimsical, but in reality, it kind of shows us a really cute and meaningful relationship between three friends. As for the cohesiveness of the soundtrack, it is very cohesive, as the entire album really just makes sense played one after another. As for my opinions, I honestly really like it. It's not one of my most listened to, but the iconic theme song of The Three Caballeros is absolutely iconic, especially if you have visited the Gran Fiesta Tour over in Epcot, you will definitely recognize the song The Three Caballeros. Next, moving on up to number 26 on my list is Winnie the Pooh. Now, Winnie the Pooh from the year 2011, I don't necessarily think people primarily think of this one as a movie musical, considering this one just has a bunch of silly, fun little songs, such as the Tummy Song and Everything is Honey. That being said, I think the relationship between the music and the story is really just to show the whimsy of this story. But that being said, I also do think that the soundtrack is quite cohesive, considering that fun-natured element is present throughout. But as for my hits and skips list, I honestly don't listen to this one that much. That being said, there is a specific reason, which I'm gonna get into right now. Next, we're moving on up to number 25 on my list, which is The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Now, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh from 1977, I think has a vastly superior soundtrack to its 2011 counterpart. This movie originated the iconic Winnie the Pooh song, which starts off the movie, but also contains a lot of other songs that are a lot more recognizable, such as Up Down Touch the Ground, A Rather Blustery Day, Heffalumps and Woozles, and Rain 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 Came Down Down Down. Now, as for the music's relationship to the story, once again, I do think it helps to show off the fun and whimsical energy of the Hundred Acre Woods and All That Inhabit It, and I really do think that the music makes this story more enjoyable. As for the cohesiveness of the soundtrack, Heffalumps and Woozles does throw it off a little bit, but overall, it does have that same general whimsical energy to it. And as for my hits and skips, I really do like Heffalumps and Woozles, but I also, I have to say, really love Rain 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 Came Down Down Down. I just think it's such a great song that perfectly shows off what is happening in that moment in the story. And of course, who doesn't love the Winnie the Pooh song, the iconic theme song? Whether you're a fan of Winnie the Pooh or not, you absolutely know it. And it's one that can get stuck in your head pretty easily. <laughs> but with that, my friends, we have reached the C tier. Now, the C tier consists of movie soundtracks that I think are okay. In my opinion, I tend to gravitate towards these movies a little bit more than everything else we've already talked about so far. I tend to find myself gravitating towards individual songs from these movie musicals, if not necessarily the entire soundtrack. Overall, I still don't think these are necessarily some of Disney's greatest soundtracks, but I do think they are generally good. With that being said, we're going to start off the C tier at number 24, which is the Aristocats. Now, with the Aristocats containing character names that come from some of the most famous composers in the world, we gotta talk about the music. For the music's relationship to the story, I do think that the music in this one is not necessarily the most important to the story, but rather helps us get a little bit of fresh air between all of the story plot points. As for the cohesiveness, 
It's not bad. I think it does sound like one very cohesive story being told within the album. And as for some of the hits and misses, I really do like the Aristocats, Thomas O'Malley, the Alley Cat, and Scales and Arpeggios quite a bit. Overall, I would say the other songs in this are not necessarily some of my favorites, and I don't really go seeking out to listen to this playlist quite a bit. But those individual songs every now and again, I'll be like, oh, I kind of feel like listening to that today. And so I search it up. <laughs> Next, moving on up to number 23 on my list is The Jungle Book. Now, The Jungle Book has some really great music in it. In brushing up and doing a little bit of research for this video, I forgot how much I actually really liked some of the songs from this movie. Now, The Jungle Book having some iconic favorites, such as The Bare Necessities, The Elephant Song, and I Wanna Be Like You, as well as That's What Friends Are For, honestly has quite a few hits. I do think the music is very involved within the story, as we quite often get plot points from the actual songs itself, which is what puts this animated soundtrack above every other one so far. As for the cohesiveness, I don't necessarily think the songs sound like one another, but they all sound like they should be in the same grouping, so it kind of works. And as for the hits and misses, I don't really have any songs that I would consider misses, but there are significantly more that I would consider hits. The Bare Necessities is obviously iconic within the Disney canon, having just made its way to the brand new Country Bear Jamboree. And I think if you start to mention a few song titles from this movie, it does tend to jog people's memory and they'd be like, oh yeah, I actually do remember that. I don't necessarily think that would be the case for every movie that we've talked about before this one though. So yeah, I really love the Jungle Book soundtrack and I think it's quite good. But next we move on up to number 22 on my list, which is the Disney animated movie, Wish. Now, the opinions surrounding Wish's soundtrack were quite polarized when this movie first came out. So many people first heard, this is the thanks I get, and immediately shot down the entire rest of the soundtrack. But I'm gonna be completely honest, I think this is one of the only misses for me in this entire soundtrack. As for the music's relationship to the story, I do think there are quite a few songs in this movie that have really effective storytelling from within the songs. Asha's song, This Wish, really sets up her entire plot. Knowing what I know now sets up the big emotional climax. And songs like At All Costs really serve as a great breath of fresh air just in the middle of plot. As for the cohesion, I do think this sounds like a very cohesive soundtrack. Although I gotta be honest, this is the thanks I get kind of sounds off in the soundtrack as opposed to in the movie. I think there's just a little bit of different mixing happening between the two versions. We get a little bit more echo in the soundtrack version versus if you're listening to the song in the movie. But as for my personal opinion, I kind of like the soundtrack. I know a lot of people don't, but I really think there are quite a few hits on this list. Starting off with the misses, quite obviously, This Is The Thanks I Get is not one of the best Disney songs ever written. You're right, I give it to you. It's true. But I would argue to say that this movie has two beautiful songs, which is This Wish, Asha's main I Want song, and the other song that surprisingly grew on me quite a bit as I spent time with this movie was At All Costs. I think At All Costs is an absolutely beautiful song. Now, it was originally written as a love duet, but later turned into something else, which was, of course, Asha and the villain singing about loving something else. I don't want to give too much away if you haven't seen the movie. But I would honestly even go to the lengths of saying that I love this song so much that I think I would love to have at all costs played at my wedding. If I get married, of course, we'll see about that. <laughs> but yeah, I love this song. It is so, so beautiful. And I think it really does belong on any romantic sounding soundtrack. But with that, friends, we are going to move into the B tier. Now, the B tier is actually quite a bit bigger than any other tier that we've talked about so far. The B tier consists of Disney animated movie musicals that have soundtracks that I think are very successful. I think these albums overall are great, but they don't fall amongst my personal favorites for Disney animated movie soundtracks. So with that, we're gonna start off the B tier at number 21, which is Frozen 2. Now I will give it to Frozen 2. I really do think that the songs in this movie are incredible, but cohesion to the story is another topic. I think Into the Unknown and Show Yourself are not necessarily the most plot-driven songs, but songs like The Next Right Thing are very impactful and do have quite a heavy-hitting emotionality that sits on top of the story's plot. As for the cohesiveness of the album, overall, 
not bad. I think it does tell a very good story without all of the plot, but it might be a little strange to hear so many power ballads mixed in with such a sad song like The Next Right Thing. As for my personal hits and misses, I don't necessarily think any of these songs are strong, strong misses, but we gotta give it to Miss Adina Menzel. She knows how to sing a hit song. <laughs> Next, moving on up to number 20 on my list. This one might be a little polarizing and I'm sorry in advance. At number 20, is in Kanto. Now there is no denying that there are quite a few hits in this movie, but overall, personally, some of the songs sound a little bit off. As for the music's involvement with the plot, I really do think quite a few plot points come across very strongly in the music, and so I do think that the music is quite vital in this storytelling. As for the album's cohesiveness, it does sound relatively cohesive, but I also do think you can tell a vast difference between songs that are sung by actual singers versus actors who are singing. To be fair, I think everybody sounds really good on this album, but I definitely do think if you're sitting down to specifically listen to vocalists, you will hear a few things that maybe might sound a little bit off or characterized. As for the hits or misses, it is undeniable that We Don't Talk About Bruno is absolutely iconic. I like the songs What Else Can I Do and Surface Pressure, but I'll be honest, I think Mirabelle's song Waiting on a Miracle is not one of the strongest that we've heard from a main protagonist in a Disney movie. Although I do have to say, it makes me cry, but Dos Oruguitas is absolutely gorgeous, and that song just rips my heart out. And so obviously it's gonna rank above everything else that we've talked about so far for actually being one of the first movie musical albums that does make me cry. But I'll be honest, there are a lot of other albums that I personally gravitate to a lot more. Next up at number 19 is one that's kind of an oddball, but I wanted to throw it in here. At number 19 is The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Now you might be thinking to yourself, this a movie musical? To which I say, yes, there is quite a bit of music in here, much of which you might have forgotten. This movie contains songs such as the Merrily song, or Merrily on our way to nowhere in particular, the Headless Horseman, Ichabod's song, and the Attack of the Headless Horseman. While it may not be the most iconic of Disney soundtracks, I gotta be honest, I think the music and the storytelling are spot on. When we go into the story of Ichabod, you get haunted music, and that's exactly what you're expecting. When we go into the story of Mr. Toad, you're getting wild, crazy, zany music, and that should be exactly what you're expecting. As for the cohesiveness, this album does feel a little bit strange because it is telling the story of two separate movies. It's often combined into one because it's the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, but if we were just to split it up into Mr. Toad and Ichabod, they would both be relatively cohesive soundtracks alone. As for the hits and misses, I really do think this one is very, very prevalent around the Halloween season, and so maybe that's why I'm ranking it higher, because I miss Halloween already, and it's only one day past. <laughs> but yes, in all honesty, I think this movie has a lot of great music that people kind of forget about. Give it another listen if you haven't in a while. Next, moving on up to number 18 on my list, is Alice in Wonderland. Now this movie has quite a few songs that I think you may have forgotten about. As for the song's involvement with the plot, there are a lot of songs to go through this entire movie. There is In a World of My Own, The Golden Afternoon, The Unbirthday Song, The Walrus and the Carpenter, and The March of the Cards, among many, many others. I do think that the music's involvement with the story does help because Alice in Wonderland is supposed to be very zany and very crazy, and all of these songs sound so vastly different from each other. But that also does create quite a bit of chaos when putting them all together in one album and expecting cohesion. It's definitely not the most cohesive album, but it's also specifically not supposed to be. And as for my favorites, I really do love the Unbirthday Party. I think that one is very cute and very iconic within the Disney community. But also Alice's song that explains the trouble that I'm always in, is quite heart-wrenching, and it's almost very difficult to make out all of the words, considering Catherine Beaumont had such a strong connection to her emotions when she was recording this song. Oh, it's a heart-wrenching performance, but it was just beautifully done. So yes, overall I really do like this one. Still not amongst my favorites, but definitely above everything else we've talked about so far. Next, moving on up to number 17 on my list, 
is Peter Pan. Now, Peter Pan has some truly beautiful songs, including, but not limited to, The Second Star to the Right and Your Mother and Mine. As for the music's relationship with the story, they're not necessarily the most intertwined, but I really do think a lot of people will immediately think of Peter Pan when they hear a lot of the songs. Really, the only song that has a lot to do with plot is Your Mother and Mine, where Wendy is convincing the boys that they should go back home to their parents. But as for the album's cohesiveness, it's pretty cohesive. A lot of the songs sound like they're coming from the exact same universe. And as for the hits and misses, I really do gravitate quite a bit to Second Star to the Right. It does hit me hard in the feels, but that's just because I feel a lot of Disney magic from it. And while I don't necessarily seek out a lot of the other music on this album, I really do love that one individual song. I think it's very beautiful. Next, moving on up to number 16 on my list, is Pinocchio. Now, Pinocchio has quite a few songs that you also may have forgotten about. There's, of course, the iconic When You Wish Upon a Star, but there are also songs such as An Actor's Life for Me, Give a Little Whistle, I've Got No Strings, and Little Wooden Head. They're songs that you don't necessarily think of immediately when you go to Pinocchio, but once you hear them and remember them, I feel like they do actually jog some memories. Now, as for the relationship between the movie and the music, I do think the music adds quite a bit of whimsy to the storytelling, but overall, the general connection between the two isn't the strongest. The songs definitely don't move the plot along like they do in a lot of other musicals. But that being said, the album is very cohesive. All of these songs definitely sound like they come from the same universe. And as for my opinions, I really do think that the music in this movie is absolutely iconic. I mean, how can you think of Disney without thinking When You Wish Upon a Star? That's just like the one iconic theme song that you think of. And so that one is definitely a hit for me, but all of the others I wouldn't necessarily consider hits, but I also wouldn't consider them misses. But next we're gonna move on up to number 15, the halfway point of today's list, which is Pocahontas. Now this movie has music that is, what the word I would use is polarizing. As for the music's relationship to the movie, I think these songs move the plot along probably better than a lot of movie soundtracks that we're gonna talk about in the future. But that being said, I don't necessarily think a lot of them are songs that are necessarily meant to be enjoyed just in casual life. The cohesiveness of the album is pretty cohesive. I would say all the songs sound like they're supposed to be together. But as for the hits and misses, to be completely honest, I think Colors of the Wind and Just Around the Riverbend are absolutely perfect. They are two absolutely gorgeous songs in the middle of an album that I don't listen to a lot. I think a lot of the other songs make very strong statements and aren't necessarily ones that people will go to just for pure enjoyment. Pocahontas definitely gets this placement because of the two songs that the titular character sings. Because these two songs are stunning and beautiful and iconic, and the rest of the album is not necessarily the easiest to listen to, I'll be completely honest. But next we move on up to number 14 on my list, and the final movie musical in the B tier, which is the movie Mulan. Now Mulan has a lot of really, really great music. Again, it's just not some of my personal favorite. I think the relationship between the music and the movie is undeniable. The songs very much do drive the plot along, and you get a lot of plot from lyrics and also from visually what you're seeing on screen. Mulan's I Want Song Reflection is the perfect example of how to set up a titular character to the point where an audience will invest in her. I'll Make a Man Out of You shows the training process where she learns to become one of the guys. And A Girl Worth Fighting For definitely moves the plot along and gets the group where they need to go. I think the songs on this album are quite cohesive, although I will say there are a lot of tonal changes, such as between Reflection, which is a beautiful ballad, and I'll Make a Man Out of You, which is sort of an up-tempo, energetic song. But overall, the two songs that I really gravitate to are the ones we've been talking about, which are Reflection and I'll Make a Man Out of You. And I wouldn't necessarily call the other songs misses, but they're definitely not ones that I actively search out. Overall, I do think this album is quite successful though. But with that, friends, we're gonna move on up to the A tier. The A tier is full of Disney animated movie soundtracks that I think are extremely successful. They are wonderful not only in moving along the plot, but also have a relatively cohesive sound and have quite a few hits in the album itself. So let's get into it because I think many of you will agree with my A tier. <laughs> Although maybe not this first one. Starting off the A tier at number 13, 
is Tangled. Now, don't get me wrong, I really do love the music in Tangled, but let's get into why this one is lower in the A tier. Tangled has a lot of really great songs, such as When Will My Life Begin, I See the Light, and Mother Knows Best. These songs all drive along the plot very well, and they all do sound pretty cohesive in terms of one complete soundtrack album. The reason why, personally, I find this one to be on the lower end of the A tier is because, again, this might totally be a personal thing, I do feel a slight disconnect between the characters and the vocalists. There are certain songs where I wish certain performers would actually do a little bit more of the acting. They all sound perfect, but I wish they would focus a little bit more on emotion and let that emotion take over the singing, as opposed to techniquing over all of it. In every performance, there has to be a healthy balance between acting and singing, and I think, personally, I just find a little bit of imbalance with the two. On the side of the singing, when I really gravitate towards hearing a character's emotion. But that being said, I think the songs are very, very catchy, and I do think a lot of them really do secure their spot in Disney iconography, specifically I See the Light. That one is just absolutely gorgeous and a perfect Disney love ballad. Next, moving on up to number 12 on my list is Moana. I love this album. This one is so, so good. Now, Moana features iconic songs such as How Far I'll Go, You're Welcome, and We Know the Way. And of course, who can forget Shiny? <laughs> as for the relationship between these songs and the storyline, I really do think there is a very strong connection, while also making room for certain songs that are all about show, as opposed to moving along the plot. Not every song has to move along the plot, but many of them should, and I feel like there's only a very few handful songs that actually do in this movie. When I think of songs like You're Welcome and Shiny, those are more so like character songs that don't necessarily move the plot along, such as How Far I'll Go. That one really does, because it gets Moana from wondering what it's like to be out on the ocean to being out on the ocean. But that being said, the album cohesiveness is just absolutely beautiful. Songs like We Know The Way really helps to establish environment, not only having a lot of Polynesian influence in the music, but also singing in the native language. Yeah, I love this album. I can listen to this music all day, but I would be lying if I said I occasionally will skip songs like You're Welcome and Shiny. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 11 on my list, which is Cinderella. Now Cinderella has some truly beautiful music, but let's get into why, once again, it's in the lower end of the A-list. Cinderella features beautiful songs, such as A Dream is a Wish Your Heart Makes, So This Is Love, and of course, how could we forget the iconic Bippity Boppity Boo. Now, the songs in this movie, once again, do move the plot along, but not every single one. There are songs such as The Working Song, which is sung by the mice, that is more so not one that I gravitate towards. <laughs> that being said, the album overall is quite cohesive, with one monkey wrench thrown in every once in a while, such as The Working Song. I think a lot of the music in this movie that features Eileen Wood's voice is just beautiful, and she has the most perfect fairy tale voice, which we talked a lot about in my ranking of Disney princess voices, which I can link up above for you. But yes, overall, the music does move the plot along, it all sounds very cohesive, and I think this one does feature quite a few songs that are iconic to Disney canon, such as A Dream Is A Wish Your Heart Makes. I really do think this could be a secondary, company-wide iconic song to When You Wish Upon A Star. And not to mention that a lot of the music in this movie just sounds so perfectly nostalgic. But with that, friends, we've reached the top 10 of my favorite Disney animated soundtracks. If your favorite soundtrack is still yet to be named, make sure to let me know which one it is down in the comments. I'm so excited to find out who is in your top 10. But with that being said, we're gonna start out the top 10 at number 10, which is Aladdin. Now, once again, a Disney animated movie that has so many iconic songs but being a little bit lower in the A tier. Let's talk about it. Aladdin features a ton of great songs, such as A Friend Like Me, A Whole New World, and Prince Ali. But why is it on the lower end? Well, let's talk about it. What I will say about this animated soundtrack is that the songs really do move the plot along quite a bit. There is, of course, the occasional showstopper, such as Friend Like Me, but I also do feel like that also helps to move the plot along, showing you all of the powers of the genie. And while the album is also quite cohesive, 
I do think that a lot of the main characters don't necessarily get the most time on this soundtrack. I mean, think about Princess Jasmine. She technically only has her duet with Aladdin, A Whole New World. She only gets half of that song, and she's a Disney princess. You would think that she would have her own song. Same thing with Aladdin, who really only has a couple reprises, one jump ahead, and shares the duet with Jasmine. You would think there would be this big, iconic, like, I want song, or something. And yes, while I have added quite a few songs into the Broadway production, the animated musical still doesn't have these. And so, in all honesty with this album, I just would have liked to hear a little bit more from our main duo. I mean, the movie's called Aladdin. I think we should have a little bit of a moment where we emotionally connect to Aladdin. <laughs> and yes, one jump ahead reprise is in there, but it's quite short. It's quite short. I wish he had a little bit more. But next we move on up to number nine on my list, which is The Lion King. Now, The Lion King usually doesn't rank super, super high for me because I always talk about the fact that I wish a lot of the lions were human characters, which again is why I tend to gravitate towards the Broadway performance of this story. But what I will say about the music is I love this album. I think this movie soundtrack is so good. Not only do all of the songs perfectly set up the emotional atmosphere of the savannah, but also help to drive the plot along. We see quite a few years pass by in the matter of a few minutes in some of these songs. Of course, we start off with the circle of life, which is just absolutely iconic. Moving on to I Just Can't Wait to Be King and Be Prepared, and also having the occasional fun one in there like Hakuna Matata. There are so many great songs in this movie, and they all sound really cohesive with one another. The reason why I would say it doesn't rank any higher is because I really do wish that Simba and Nala sang Can You Feel the Love Tonight? I feel like that would have given it a little bit more of an emotional pull as opposed to just hearing it in voiceover. But overall, I have to say, I absolutely love this album and it definitely deserves the top 10 of today's list. Next, we move on up to number eight on my list, which is Frozen. Frozen broke the world. <laughs> I feel like we all started singing these songs and just haven't stopped since this movie debuted. Songs like For the First Time in Forever and Let It Go and Love is an Open Door and Fixer Upper, they are all ones that we know, but we gotta give it up for Let It Go. This one really changed the entirety of the Disney company. The songs really do move along the plot in this story and really do create a strong relationship between plot and songs. All of this album sounds incredibly cohesive, and I think there's really just a song in here for everybody. Whether you like the iconic, regular-sounding Disney princess song, you have for the first time in forever. If you love an iconic, belted power ballad, you have Let It Go. If you like the fun little showstopper moment, you have Fixer Upper. And if you love the cute little sidekicks, then hey, you have In Summer. This one truly has one for everybody, and that's what I really love about this one, but that also does mean that I don't necessarily gravitate to every song, as I feel like a lot of people also don't necessarily gravitate to every song. I'm gonna say it, I love Let It Go. I really do belt it out every single time, but I also know that that song is not for everybody. That's what I like about this entire soundtrack is that you can find something in here that you would gravitate to, if not everything. Next, moving on up to number seven on my list. I love this one so much. At number seven is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now this is another movie musical soundtrack that will make me cry when I listen to it. The opening titles is gorgeous. I absolutely love the overture to Snow White, as well as the happy ending song, the finale, that gets me, that gets my heart every single time. <laughs> I also have to say I love Snow White songs. I feel like a lot of people forget how many she has, as she has I'm Wishing at the beginning, she has With a Smile and a Song, and Someday My Prince Will Come. The prince, for having very little screen time, also gets his own song with one song. And while the songs don't necessarily drive the plot forward, they do give us quite a bit of time to sit with these characters and really grow emotionally with them. In addition, all of the songs sound extremely cohesive, like they're all supposed to come from the exact same place. And I honestly think every single song on this album is extremely good. I guess you could argue that like, one or two of the dwarf songs is skippable, but I'll be honest, I really love the silly song. I think that one is just so much fun to listen to and so beautiful. And the background music is just perfect in this movie. Next, moving on up to number six on my list is Hercules. Whoever at the Walt Disney Company thought that creating an entire soundtrack around gospel music 
to tell the story of the god Hercules, genius, deserves the biggest paycheck. <laughs> Hercules' soundtrack is absolutely wonderful. From the gospel truth to I won't say I'm in love to go the distance, it is all just incredible. The music drives the plot along perfectly while also giving us little moments to sit back and just enjoy what's happening. The album is incredibly cohesive and I think every single song is absolutely wonderful. That being said, One Last Hope is not my favorite, but that's okay. It's forgivable. That's the reason we're not quite in S tier yet. <laughs> but yes, Hercules is just a wonderful soundtrack. Highly recommend if you haven't listened to it. If you haven't already, you're in for quite a treat. Next, moving on up to number five on my list, the final soundtrack within the A tier. This one might shock you. Yes, at number five, is The Little Mermaid. Now, I know what you're gonna say, what happened to Part of Your World? That's your favorite Disney song. You're right, we're gonna get into it, don't worry. Now, The Little Mermaid soundtrack is absolutely pure nostalgia for me. I absolutely love the music in this movie. It drives along the plot. It all sounds like it comes from the same film, which is beautiful, but I will be completely honest. The reason why this doesn't quite make the S tier is that there are two songs on this soundtrack that I skip every single time and almost never, ever, ever choose to listen to, which is Daughters of Triton and Les Poisson. I think a lot of the other songs in this movie are really good, such as Kiss the Girl. The villain song, Poor Unfortunate Souls, is beautiful. But if I'm gonna be completely honest, the two songs that I truly love from this film are Part of Your Worlds and Under the Sea. Those are really the only two that I listen to consistently. And so while I absolutely love them and they are two of my favorite Disney songs, I think a lot of the other moments where we're not with the main characters of this movie kind of does bring the album down out of the S tier and I feel so bad saying it, but I think you guys are going to be okay with what ended up in S tier. So you know what? Let's get into the best of the best. Next we're moving on up to the S tier. The S tier is full of Disney movie albums that I think are absolutely wonderful pieces of art and deserve to be listened to on repeat. Very few skips in these albums, and I cannot wait to tell you my top four. We are starting off the S tier at number four, which is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This soundtrack is majestic. It is so intricate and complex and deep and Oh, it's everything all in one. <laughs> the songs have a perfect relationship with the story where they perfectly move along the plot, but also give us those really deep moments with specific characters. Songs like Out There and God Help the Outcasts really help to gravitate audiences to these characters, while songs like The Bells of Notre Dame help to give the entire setup of the story in one cohesive song that all make sense. The album is wonderfully cohesive. Songs like Hellfire are so haunting and beautiful, and there's just so much depth in this entire album. You gotta listen to it if you haven't already. It is absolutely not to be missed. Next, moving on up to number three on my list is Beauty and the Beast. How I love this soundtrack. Beauty and the Beast has some of the most iconic songs with songs like Be Our Guest and Belle and Something There, Guest On in the opening credits. There are so many incredible songs in this movie and I absolutely love each and every one of them. At this point in the list, it's so hard to put these movies in order, but oh, I love this one so much. Beauty and the Beast is truly a successful musical, not even an animated movie musical, but a musical. All of the characters you're so heavily drawn to and all of the music sounds incredibly cohesive as it all draws on very classical music. The characters' voices are just beautiful and, ugh, in my opinion, I really don't think there is a single skip on this entire movie soundtrack. If you have not ever listened to Beauty and the Beast, the song, tears. Tears. <laughs> it is just, oh my god, this entire album is so, so, so good. I cannot speak enough praises about Beauty and the Beast. Ugh, it is absolutely deserving of the top three of my list. Next, moving on up to number two on my list. At number two is Sleeping Beauty. Now, this one doesn't have a whole lot of human vocals, but for what it does with instrumentals, whoa. Of course, we have such iconic songs as Once Upon a Dream, but I feel like a lot of the other songs go relatively unnoticed. The intro with Praising Princess Aurora and the finale with Sleeping Beauty theme is just 
sweeping and the perfect fairy tale music that you could ever want and wish for. Mary Costa and Bill Shirley's voices sound so incredibly beautiful on their main song. All of this music sounds like it comes from the exact same universe, which is just perfect, pure fairy tale perfection. <laughs> and to round it out, the music really does take us on an entire journey. Even if it doesn't have the most song lyrics, it really does a beautiful job of just sweeping us through and painting the entire movie before us. This entire album is something to experience. So again, if you have not ever listened to the entirety of the Sleeping Beauty album, highly highly, highly recommend. Oh, but with that, friends, we have reached number one on my list of favorite Disney animated movie musical soundtracks. Have you possibly guessed what it could be? Here's your last chance. If you haven't guessed my favorite, make sure to leave it down in the comments. Yes, at number one, friends, oh my god, I can't wait. At number one is The Princess and the Frog. I love this soundtrack. It is perfection from start to finish. From songs that set up the atmosphere like Down in New Orleans to Princess Tiana's I Want song with Almost There, to an iconic villain song like Friends on the Other Side, to a fun friendship song in When We're Human, to Ray's really cute songs of Mabel Evangeline and Going Down the Bayou, this movie is truly full of hits. There is not one single skip on this album. It gives you this perfect Bayou Jazz princess fairy tale fantasy, and it is just so enjoyable to listen to, and truly, truly, some of my favorite Disney animated music. Everything in the soundtrack is so cohesive, and it perfectly drives along the plot, giving us important character development in the music itself. This one is utter perfection. I absolutely love it. Highly, highly recommend checking out the Princess and the Frog soundtrack if you have not yet already. Whew, but with that, friends, we have talked about 30 of Disney's most iconic animated movie musical soundtracks. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. And also be sure to tell me down in the comments which is your favorite animated movie soundtrack. I am so excited to hear about all of your favorites. And in addition, let me know your favorite songs from each one. I really love getting to hear all of your favorites down in the comment section and let me know if you agree with any of my placements down below. Oof, this was so fun today. It's been a while since I've done a ranking video, but these truly are so much fun and I love getting to share my Disney lists with you guys. So if you have any Disney lists that you are very curious to hear all of my favorites about, make sure to leave it down below. I am absolutely always open to video suggestions and I would love to talk about different Disney things that you guys want to hear about. Thank you all so much for joining me. I had so much fun today, but with with that, friends, I'll say stay magical, and until next time, I'll see you all real soon.